The long-awaited release of Final Cut Pro on the iPad is finally here. Today I'm giving you a basic walkthrough and first impressions from just an average user of Final Cut Pro. The first step for Final Cut Pro on the iPad is to create or select which project you want to edit. When you are in a project, you can definitely tell the app is made for a touchscreen compared to the Mac version. Let's first look at the basic layout of the application. Take your finger and move the timeline up or down or your media section in the top right. You can tell this application can be altered quickly to help your workflow on whatever you're working on. The timeline is at the bottom as you see here, your media sections at the top right, and your viewer window is in the top left of the screen. It's very intuitive to zoom in and out of the timeline by pinching with your fingers. The timeline is easy to navigate with your fingers, mouse pad, or pencil. The bottom left of your screen has the inspect, volume, animate, and multicam options. So far I've messed with all of these options except for really the animate option. Inspect is mostly used for video and volume edits on your clips in your timeline. The volume is a way to adjust volume for ranges with keyframes when needed. And the multicam option here is extremely easy to use even with my first time of using it. If you notice the select option, this will change depending if you have volume or just a clip in your timeline selected. This gets more intuitive as you mess with it more using the software. On the multicam option, you can select up to four camera angles and the sound will automatically sync up between the angles. Once you do that, you can select which angles you want to use for the clip. When you are in the timeline, you can navigate with your cursor or skim with your pencil if you have an M2 iPad. The best way to navigate or trim to exact frames is actually the new feature, the joggle wheel. It's located on the side and if it's not there, you can turn it on by a button on the top right of the screen. You can move the jog wheel anywhere on the right or left side of the screen. The more you use it, the more natural it feels and you realize this app is definitely built specifically for touch. The quick customization of Final Cut Pro really makes video editing fun. As you get used to the controls, you'll start to fly through your editing with ease. The top right has the media section, video and audio effects, the jog wheel toggle, redo and undo buttons, and a button for user guide and other options. When the media button is activated, this is where you import your media to and select what you want in your project's timeline. You can touch any of these buttons at the top to deactivate them, which hides them from the viewer, and just click them again to reactivate them. The next option is the jog wheel button. If you need it on the screen, just activate it to help edit your timeline. The last main button here is for adding video or audio effects to your project. You will find transitions, titles, backgrounds, objects, and soundtracks. There's some new options here, but not the amount that you typically find on the Mac version. You can organize your media with keywords, favorite option, you can reject a clip. If you end up uploading your project to Final Cut Pro, these keywords created here group the media nicely. The full media clip or a shortened version can be sent to the timeline. Shortcuts with the keyboard work here and you can use the options to either append to the storyline, connect at the playhead, insert at playhead, or overwrite at playhead. You can either drag or select those options there. Finally, in the media section, you can filter your footage by media types, favorites, 
keywords that you created or rejected media. If you have a lot of footage for a project, the filter can be your best friend. The top buttons are where you can import from your photos or file app on your iPad. You can film footage straight from the iPad to your project. You can use the new live drawing option with your pencil or finger. And when you're done, of course, export the project whichever way you need to. If you use Final Cut Pro for the Mac, some of the export options are similar to what you are used to. The one additional feature is Final Cut Pro for iPad project. This is the option to use for exporting the project so you can upload it to your Mac version of Final Cut Pro. I'm definitely happy Final Cut Pro has finally come to the iPad. Even with this being the first version of Final Cut Pro, there is plenty of potential here. I may not use it for all my videos, but I'm starting to really see a clear workflow I could utilize this software for. Let's take a quick look at some things I really enjoy and other things I would like to see improved after one week's of use with Final Cut Pro on the iPad. Let's look at the likes so far with this software. So ease of use and display customization. So after you start playing with the software for a bit, it's very intuitive and being able to move the screen around easily helps you to just focus on your main task at hand. Also, the jog wheel is a great new feature. This is a good way to navigate the timeline and trim your clips to the exact frame. So it's a very precise tool, which is outstanding. Also the live drawing we talked about and also just key commands with the magic keyboard. That works awesome. The multicam editing, option is one of my favorites you can take up to four clips of the same shot and sync the audio simply play the clip and choose which clip you want to switch to by a single touch it works great the retime duration option this is something i didn't really show but it allows you to set a clip duration for instance you want to set a clip for 47 seconds now final cut pro will actually speed up the clip in order for it to finish at your exact set time which would be that 47 seconds to find it go to your inspect tool and select clip speed option you will see the retime duration here i wish the mac version had this feature it's very convenient to finish a project let's look at what's missing now so a few missing things from final cut pro on the ipad I'm not gonna mention every little transition or effect, just some things that would make my workflow so much better. First off, number one, add-ons. We know something's coming. Now, hopefully the majority, if not all our add-ons from the Mac version will be there. I hope so, but we'll see. You also need to be able to send the project back from the Mac. It's nice to be able to send it from the iPad to the Mac, but if you could start one on one device and transfer back and forth, it would be a game changer. Being able to really just pick up a project and edit on whatever device you want would save so much time. And lastly, one thing I noticed, voiceover. So I had to create a video on the iPad to import directly to the project. That worked okay, but you really need to be able to create a voiceover on the timeline as you're going through your footage. Maybe it's there, but I didn't see it. So if it's not, it's definitely needed. Let me know if this helped interest you in Final Cut Pro. It's a program I've used for a few years, so I'm excited it's finally come to the iPad. If you enjoyed the video, click on the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications to see my videos first. And thank you for supporting the channel. If you have any questions, leave me a comment and I'll be happy to answer. Enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you soon.